Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is episode 105 of my brand new comics haul series where I show you guys all the new books that I pick up every week at my local comic shop and I tell you a little bit about every <clears throat> every single issue. So I've got six uh, single issues in total this week that all came out. I've also got a uh, trade paperback, which I think came out a couple weeks ago. So I'll just skim over that at the end. We'll start with the independence this week, though. A pretty big release here from Mark Miller. This one is the Ambassadors issue number one. So it says it on the cover, right? Eight billion people, six can have superpowers. From what I've seen, I think this is going to be a six issue miniseries. So kind of giving off like some, some no, I was going to say something is killing the children. Kind of giving off um, eight billion genies vibes, right? That series where each person on Earth gets a genie and they have to figure out what to do with it. This is like kind of the same global scale, right? But more of a selective thing where only some people get superpowers. Um, from what I know, this series is going to have a different artist for every single issue, like some of the best in the industry. We've got Frank Quietly on this first one. And, you know, this is part of Mark Miller's whole deal where he makes comics that are immediately um, optioned by Netflix. He's got some sort of deal with them to produce his comics. So uh, artwork looks really cool in here. Hopefully they deliver through on this interesting um, idea, and we'll see how this is. Let me know if you guys want to review this or anything or my thoughts on it. We'll see. Ambassadors, number one, I thought I'd give that a shot, pull that one off the stands and see how it is. Next up, though, sticking with the independence, I've got one more independent issue here. This one is from Boom Studios, uh, one of my favorite series of the week. This is probably actually my most anticipated that I've been looking forward to the most. Once Upon a Time at the End of the World, number five. It's really been a breakout hit, in my opinion. I know people are kind of hyping this up. It's gotten some different uh, first, you know, second and third printings for that first issue. Um, and yeah, I don't, I cannot recommend the series enough. Uh, it's a post-apocalyptic thing, which obviously there is a lot of um, out in comics right now, especially from Independence. Um, there's a lot from Image, of course, but this is definitely more of a unique comic. It's this like growing love story, I guess, between these two characters, um, Mezzi and Maceo, uh, and them surviving the apocalypse. We've got more revealed about one of their pasts and how they came from this ranger society that would um, like train kids to survive in the apocalypse, so they'd have to like endure brutal punishments and stuff. And uh, the other character is like more lighthearted. He's lived in like a tower his whole t his whole life, where he had everything he could possibly need, and he's venturing through the apocalypse for the first time. Um, and then we've got like these flash forwards to the very far future, where both of them are like all grizzled and like you know they're old they've gone through so much and become legends in the future and stuff so jason aaron writing this really masterfully done i'm loving this series so far i hope it's ongoing i hope we actually get to get everything between uh the present and the future filled in eventually because i'm really liking this series let me know what you guys think of this one if you're still grabbing it Next up, though, let's move on to Marvel Comics. I've got four different issues from them this week, starting it off here with Thor, issue number 32. So we've still got the guest writer, Torn Gronbeck, on here. We've also got a new artist, um, so let's just show off some of the interior artwork here. Good cover there by Nick Klein, though. We've got Doctor Doom getting involved. Uh, honestly, I don't really mind the guest writing that much. I think that Torn Gronbeck has been doing a really great job so far. It hasn't The series hasn't suffered too much from the new writer coming on, right? She's just pretty much uh, picked up the same threads that Donny Cates was already working with. The whole Thanos thing. Artwork looking a little simplistic in here, but I'm liking um, the style, to be honest, by Juan Gedeon. So we'll see about this. Obviously, like I said, dealing with the whole Thanos thing, we're getting Thor's grandpa, Bor, involved in different ways. And then it looks like Valkyrie is also in this issue. We'll see about this moving forward. Um, I think my main complaint about Torn Gronbeck's writing so far is just that she's really getting into like Norse mythology and um, different characters and stuff, so it's a little hard to remember what happens in every issue. But big characters getting involved, right? We've got Lady Hell, we've got Doctor Doom, um, and more and more people. Thanos, obviously, is a big player. So Thor number 32, uh, curious to see what's going to happen in the future with that series. Next up, though, this is the penultimate issue of one of my favorites from Marvel, Strange Academy Finals number five. Number six is going to be the end of this run, um, as well as the end of, you know, the past Strange Academy run that ran for, I think, 18 issues that Scotty Young and Humberto Ramos, the same creative team, finished up. So um, I do recommend this a lot. I'd say you do have to read everything, though, to really get the full picture. You can start with finals number one, but um, they don't do, like, that good of a job catching you up. It's just better to see how these characters have been fleshed out and everything before moving on to the um you know the big conclusion in this last story arc i'll just be sad to see them go who knows why they're choosing to end the series but i do hope that strange academy will be continued in some way shape or form after this right even though the same uh, original creative team won't be on it it never will be quite the same as this though right this series has really picked up popularity as it's gone along. It's uh, been awesome to see more and more people jumping on it. I've been here since day one. I had some faith in it um, when it was that like kind of random you know, new series about magic users that was pretty unlikely to succeed because it was like a full new cast of characters, but they've done a really good job with it. I'll be sad to see it go, but we've still got that one more issue, right? 
Next from Marvel, though, this one is Deadpool number five. Probably cover of the week right here. That's a really cool cover there. Um, it's by Martin Cocolo, who is also the interior artist. That's probably my favorite part of the series so far is his artwork. Uh, has been really well done. Uh, a little bit of spoilers here. I'm just going to talk about what happened at the very end of the last issue. We got it revealed that Cletus Cassidy is actually, like, inside of the, of the Carnage symbiote that has been like growing within Deadpool throughout this whole series. We've got this newer villain called the Harrower who planted it within him since he has like those regenerative abilities uh, because she's trying to grow Carnage Symbiote to control herself. There's the Harrower on this page. <clears throat> but now that Cletus Cassidy is in this book, I know he's also in Carnage, right? He's kind of returning as a character. So I don't know if this is going to connect to the Carnage ongoing series at all. I kind of doubt it, especially with that whole Summer of Symbiotes event that we've got coming up. So we'll see about that. But a uh, really good series so far. They're really handling Deadpool like he should be handled. This is a really, really great Deadpool series in general with some great artwork. So we'll see about the future of this series. But I think this might be the end of the arc. We'll see about that. That's Deadpool number five. Last issue I grabbed from Marvel this week, though. This is also the end of a, a mini series that's been going around for a little while now. This is Planet Hulk World Breaker, but it says World Broken, right? Number five. Cool cover. Not a great series, in my opinion. Um, I just don't really think they're doing the original Planet Hulk justice. And this whole sequel maybe just didn't need to be made in general. It is set like a thousand years in the future of the Marvel Universe um, in a world where like Jen Walter, She-Hulk, and Amadeus Cho have all made their way to Sakaar. We, we don't know like what happened on Earth, but um, the World Breaker, Bruce Banner, from his time originally coming to this planet and becoming like the leader of, of its people and everything uh he's like this feared figure who hasn't hulked out in a long time since he lost control and we've got like this queen that's trying to uh ban any green skinned like hulk people so it's kind of their story of like uprising against this big queen so in a way it's similar to the original planet hulk but it's just not that well written in my opinion i don't care that much about too many of the characters uh especially just because it's set so far in the future in a time where uh, this like storyline will never actually happen in the future of the Marvel Universe. So it kind of feels like a what if in a way, if you guys know what I'm saying. So we'll see about this. Big conclusion, maybe they'll wrap it up in a cool way. Artwork is pretty cool, but in general, I'm just not feeling it too much. I also feel like it could have been longer, right? They should have like had this been set in the present day and given them like, you know, I don't know, like 12 issues or something like that. Because the original Pen Hulk was really long. They can't just like squeeze this into five issues. I don't know. That's just my opinion, though. If you guys are liking that series, let me know you know, why down in the comments. I haven't heard too many people talking about that book. The last uh, thing that I picked up this week, though, I won't show this for too long, but um, it's a series that I've been wanting to wrap up for a while now. This is Do a Powerbomb, the big trade paperback that collects all seven issues. Uh, I think I got the first maybe two or three issues <clears throat> in single issue form, uh, but I decided to just grab this. I used like some of my store points, um, so I got it mostly for free. Just because I really wanted to finish off this story, I've heard it's really well done by Daniel Warren Johnson, and I loved uh, the few issues that I did read. So yeah, awesome artwork. It's a WWE story that goes like supernatural, and there's this insane tournament um, throughout the entire series, right? So awesome series. Um, I can't wait to get into that. If you've already read this, I'm curious to know what you think of it down in the comments, too. I've mostly heard good things. That's about it for this week's haul, though. Uh, let me know what you guys got down in the comments section below. Let me know what you're looking forward to or which issue is your favorite if you've already read them this week. Um, and yeah, if you've already, if you uh, have been enjoying the content and you haven't already hit the subscribe button, make sure to do that too. We're getting really close to that 500 subscriber milestone, which will be awesome getting there soon. I appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you next week for next week's new comics haul. Bye guys.